What's up, guys? This is the legit boss, Sasha Banks, and you are listening to WNS. You are listening to the official Wrestling News Source podcast. For all of your information, go to WrestlingNewsSource.com or check us out on Facebook by searching WrestlingNewsSource.com or WNS Podcast. You can also find us on YouTube, Twitter, Stitcher, and iTunes by searching Wrestling News Source Podcast or WNS Podcast. Now being broadcast in over 45 different countries, here are your hosts. Daniel Heron, Tyler Hebert, and Doug. That's right. What's up, everyone? I'm Daniel Heron. I'm Tyler Hebert. I'm Doug. And we welcome you to episode 332 of the official podcast for WrestlingNewsSource.com. For all of your information, go to WrestlingNewsSource.com. Check us out on Facebook, WrestlingNewsSource.com. You can find us on Facebook, doing this podcast, on YouTube, doing this video, and on iTunes, Wrestling News Source Podcast. We're on a lot of places. On it. We're on That's all of them. On in. Stitcher, Beyond Pod, Player.fm, and Satchel. And all you have to do to find this is uh, yell Tyler A. Bear. Yeah? Yep. That's all they have to do? Yep. They don't have to pull out their phone and search for anything or, or pull out their laptop or search for anything. They just scream, Tyler A. Bear. Yep. But it pops up. All right. No, just <laughs> search Wrestling News Source Podcast to find us. Just uh, the pulled your chain podcast is on twitter at wns podcast and daniel is at wns underscore daniel tyler's a tyler underscore Abear. there you go so welcome to the show where mr a bear is a liar nope a deceiver it worked one time ask noah he tries to pull your chain pull your leg whatever it is the expression is i pulled it off the chain wax yeah <laughs> So welcome to the show. We've got a lot to cover this week. We've got feedback, Raw, SmackDown, Hot Topics, and of course our Battleground predictions as that's taking place this Sunday. Man, talk about sneaking up on you, right? Um, does it sneak up on you? We know every two weeks shit pops up. <laughs> yeah, it does. So uh, so we certainly thank everyone for tuning in. Uh, we do want to start this show kind of on a somber note, unfortunately. Um, a, uh, a fan, I guess, uh, of or a, a friend of Ben. Uh, unfortunately passed away uh, over the week and uh, Ben has asked us to, to say a few words. He has an address that he um, he wrote and I'll uh, read it out to him. Uh, it says, quote, I am deeply saddened to announce WrestlingNewsArena.com founder and good friend of Re- WrestlingNewsForce.com, uh, Sean Moniz. I'm hoping I'm saying that right. M-O-N-I-Z. Uh, Moniz uh, has passed away on Monday in hospice care. He was 33 Following a lengthy lengthy battle with lung cancer, Sean was once a big part of WNS, helping with news coverage and support of myself behind the scenes. He'll be deeply missed. WrestlingNewsSource.com sends out our deepest and heartfelt condolences to Sean's family and friends. Uh, and that is, of course, coming from Ben Karen, the uh, director of WNS. So as part of the WNS family, we certainly would like to also extend a uh, Heartfelt condolence to Sean's family and friends and uh, and anyone who knew him. That's that's really tough to uh, to go at such a young age. So yeah, I mean, um, I didn't know him personally, but I mean, he seems to have been like a big part of the site and uh, good friends with Ben. And I know it's awful to hear of anybody going that young and mm-hmm. especially under those uh, conditions because I know that like lung cancer is not. Uh, an easy battle. I mean, that had to have been like a tough, tough fight for the guy. And mm-hmm. uh, you know, condolences and you know, real sorry to hear that he yeah. had to go through that. And that anybody who was, you know, knew him or was friends with him, family had to, you know, go through that. So sorry about that. Yeah, it's uh, it's really tough. So uh, hopefully he's at peace and his family and friends can remember the the happy times that they had with him. And uh, you know, it just sucks. Uh, being 33 years old and and not only losing your life but having to deal with lung cancer in the process of that is just never easy, never fun. Um, but we are going to try and have fun this episode because, like I said before, we have plenty to cover. Uh, we've gonna, we're going to go into our feedback. First bit of feedback we have is from James saying the only pay per view I saw on TV was King of the Ring, where Rikishi got injured by the use of the stairs, and my friend in high school showed us the Owen Hart death pay per view he taped. Ooh, it's tough to watch. Yeah, uh, I actually did not get to see. I did not see that pay per view. You so. know what? I bet they don't have that anywhere. You know, I mean, I wouldn't think that they would have. 
the unedited version no you can't yeah. you can't really find yeah. that like they have the pay-per-view itself on the network but they skip that part oh um, I, I don't blame them. so it's not something you put no no not at all uh, but thanks for the feedback, James. And uh, final bit of feedback we have is from Tom saying, Overall, I thought Great Balls of Fire was okay. It was better than the last two Raw pay-per-views with the Universal title picture from a good booking standpoint. Going forward, I think they should and possibly will have Strowman pin Brock at SummerSlam in whatever match they have. Brock will take his time off. Strowman and Reigns will feud for the title. Balor, Rollins, and Joe... Um, Maybe Cena will be in the picture, too, up until Brock takes the title back around the Rumble, and we get the match I personally don't want of Brock versus Roman. Also, in Daniel's defense, a lot of people, or at least from what I saw, were nitpicking about the camera angles. Uh, I think more the more angles they show, they show more flaws. Three angles max, less is more. Keep up. Keep those Rick and Morty references coming. <laughs> yeah, I mean... Cool. I mean, Dino's wrong, and all the, <laughs> all those people are wrong too. But you know, it's all good. Well, I appreciate. It. I'm glad. I'm glad that uh, the one comment that we got in regards to the camera work was in my favor. So, uh, so thank you for that. Love it, love it, dub, dub. Absolutely. So, um, yeah. Before we go into raw and all that stuff, um, did y'all end up watching the rest of the press conferences for McGregor and Mayweather? No, I saw the the second one, but that's. It's all just, man, it was nuts. <clears throat> Neither so, man is going to come out looking great after all this. Like, they're, like I see comments where they're like, oh, he destroyed this guy. Or, you know, McGregor destroyed Mayweather. I'm like, neither of them looking, are coming out looking good. But, you know. There's that. And then there's the, the racist stuff going on. I hadn't heard any the, of that. There was, I don't know. It was because... McGregor was calling um, Mayweather a boy. Hmm. That situation, I don't know. Don't I don't know. know the full situation on that. Uh, I let them people do whatever. Yeah, let them do their thing, and we'll just watch the fight. So, um, yeah, just I'm watch bananas. I don't. Well, that's that's yeah. Um, so yeah, I'm kind of looking forward to the fight. Yeah, the fight itself. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Uh, let's go into Raw. Um, we got to kick things off with Dean Ambrose coming out. I actually missed the uh, the opening part of this uh, segment, but uh, Dean Ambrose coming out, and uh, he had a steel chair with him, nicknamed Steely Dan. Uh, Seth Rollins came out after Ambrose was calling out The Miz. You got Rollins instead. They don't said, trust each other. Dude, it's been three years. It's time to move on. I've already moved past whenever you cashed in Money in the Bank on me. So whatever it's going to take for you to move past all this, let's just get it over with and get it done. They're getting past the point with um, Seth Rollins and Bray Wyatt. So Seth Rollins is with Dean Ambrose, take on Miz Taraj. <clears throat> yeah. And they set up for that to happen next week. It'll be a three-on-two Ambrose and Rollins versus the entire Miz Taraj. So, uh, but the Miz Taraj did come out and lay a beat down on you Ambrose you find and this Rollins. this like a win-win situation? I don't know, because... Doug, I I know that you don't know, like Seth Rollins, and at times there's Dean Ambrose stuff, and I like the Miz, but I don't know how the situation plays together all together. You know, how do you feel about it? Um, I mean, from a from the perspective of them talking me back into like wanting to see them as a team, they didn't do themselves any favors in that regard. They didn't like convince me that I needed to see them as a team again. Um, but there's not a lot going on for either guy without rehashing things that they've already done to death. So I don't have a problem with them. I mean, I think the end point is clearly them getting back together and them transferring over to, to feud with the bar or Seamus and Cesaro, like over the titles. I think that's, I think that's the end goal just because what else are they going to do with these two guys that they haven't already done? Like, Ambrose has wrestled Miz so many times, and yeah. same thing with Rollins and and <clears throat> excuse me, uh, with, with Rollins and uh, Bray, they they wrestled so many times, and there's not really like a neither one of these guys are going to the title picture right now, and there's not really any lateral move, movements that are fresh. So I don't have a problem with them teaming up. I just they didn't 
make me feel good about it and the way they presented it. Would you say those feuds that they did so many times is just like the current day Randy Orton and John Cena? Because they remember how they did, they were like fighting over and over and over and over in the past. Yeah, Yeah. but they, but that is a little bit different in the sense that they presented it as like the face of the company versus like the 1B face of the company, like feuding over the top spot, which has at least theoretically built in more meaning than these guys fighting, you know, over the same stuff. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Like I said, I didn't get to catch this, this segment, but, uh, I heard that there were even Roman chants. Um, people want a uh, shield on. reunion or shield to get back together. Yeah. And I'm sure that they'll do it one day, but at the moment they kind of, they kind of need to do their own thing. I don't know. Um, I think they're going to for sure get them back together. For sure they're going to mm-hmm. feud with Cesaro and Sheamus. Is my what I think is happening. Like, do you think they'll have all three members? No, 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 just them for just now. Just Ambrose and Rollins? Yeah. Okay. Uh, and like I said, that set up for, uh, for a match for next week where it's going to be the team of Ambrose and Rollins going up against the Miz Taraj. Uh, we got to see Bailey going up against Alexa Bliss. Roman's too busy. He's got titles to win. That's right. Okay. Um Nia Jax was in Alexa's corner, and then Sasha came out to be in Bailey's corner, which caused all kinds of distractions. Bailey gets the win, so Champ loses again, and whatever. Um, tag match in the cruiserweight division: Mustafa Ali teaming up with Jack Gallagher to go up against Drew Gulak and Brian Kendrick. I like that. Um, make a two hundred five a better. Uh, it's the same like this thing. Yeah, make yeah. yeah. It's the same as the. I have that combat zone one. Yeah, hmm. he's basically just revamped the the CZW thing, and I think it's cool. He even has like a shirt that make it, it, it basically the exact same make a, the combat zone into a two hundred five live. I kind of want that shirt just so I have both. And those it's shirts. in black and yellow, which is like the CZW, CZW <laughs> color. So I thought I think it's kind of cool. Well, Plus, nudge. he like Wait. he shaved off he shaved the scruff off, and he's getting like the very like comb over. Yeah. Well, no, but he's getting that very like politiciany like haircut going on, and yeah. I think it's a cool. I almost didn't recognize him at first because he because he did shave off the scruff. Letting the hair grow. I, I don't yeah. know exactly what their plan is for him, but I hope they give him more than. I mean, I think it's a cool little gimmick for that show because I think the one problem is that they don't let those guys go all out enough to where it makes a whole lot of sense. He's sort of making it work in the sense that he thinks like any risk at all is showboating, so I think he makes it work in that regard. But it, I think it would be more effective for a wider audience if they let the 205 guys just go like bad shit and he was like mm-hmm. the one guy who's like this is insane why are these yeah. guys like you know what i mean <laughs> that was pretty cool yeah because that is one thing that uh you know the whole no fly zone that he's that he's doing there hasn't been a whole lot of high flying action in the cruiserweight division i mean there's been a few every once there in a while guys but... who do a little bit of flying and have a finish that's a flying move but it's yeah. not like they're going they're not going balls to the wall right and so whenever I see the cruiserweights and they just put on a traditional WWE style match, you know, the the tope through the middle rope to the outside and aside from their finisher, they're not really doing anything that's making me go, whoa. Well, see, the thing, the thing with why the campaign for a better combat zone works so well is because he's like a, like a grapply guy mm-hmm. with a bunch of like deathmatch guys. He's like, fuck these guys. These guys are fucking this. This is shit. They're wrestler. not wrestlers. Yeah. And so like the contrast is so high that it gives him something to play off of. This is like the contrast is not nearly as, no. as you know, wide. So it's like, yeah, kind of, but not really. Mm. He's tr- he's trying to carve a spot out for himself. I think he's, he's trying to do something. Damn it. I think it works for him. I think it would work a lot better if the, they sort of took the cuffs off of the division. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree. <clears throat> uh, let's see. Mustafa Ali and Jack Gallagher got the win. Then we got to hear from Enzo, who cut a uh, very interesting promo. <laughs> and then Big Cass came out to try and respond. What I found interesting about it is that Enzo is talking about, yeah, you know, you picked me up and you're seven foot tall and... You know, you held me over your head. That added an extra two or three feet, which made me made the fall like 15 feet. I still got up and uh, crawled back in that ring and made you finish the job. You know, I would. But then here comes the big show 
and you cower away and roll out of the ring. I would never do something like that. And then here comes Big Cass, and what does he do? He rolls out of the ring. So, and the and the promo he cut was very heelish. So I'm sitting there going, okay, are are you the good guy in this, or are you the bad guy? Because he, you know, Big Cass did a bad thing, but it, the way that Enzo was talking made him seem like the heel. Yeah, he seemed like a chicken shit. So yeah. I mean, if your your goal in that promo is to make Cass, I mean, to make Enzo like less likable than like you know mission accomplished yeah accomplished <laughs> that's another example of like a uh, good guys you know sound like a dick or well, i don't like, know if that's a direction he was given or if they told him to go out there and talk and that's where he ended up if so that's maybe they need to rein him in maybe he's first of all Cass. Uh, i mean i keep saying Cass. i mean enzo sorry but uh <laughs> i don't know i don't need to <sighs> I don't need 15 minute promos out of Enzo every fucking week. Like he gets carried away and he gets lost. He gets out in the weeds and he's like trying to get his way back to where his point <laughs> and where he's like me fucking trying to do a podcast is like, he gets out in the weeds, doesn't know where the fuck he is. And he's just crawling back to trying to make a point that he forgot that he was making like 15 minutes ago. God damn. Someone ran that motherfucker in or like a balls Mahoney interview. <laughs> Start it. Ask one question, 20 minutes later. Oh, yeah, back to your question. I mean, he's not... You guys know what I'm trying. He, he's, yeah. he's getting too long of promos, and he's <laughs> not, like, concisely making any points. And yeah. just because you've got a couple of, like, witty lines does not make you a great promo, and someone needs to figure that out with him. I don't know. And I will give him credit as far as a face thing to do. He pulled out a little kid out of the crowd. I was like, hey, come here. We're going to sit down, and we're going to watch this beat Yeah, down. but the kid didn't... Stay there. He'd shoot the kid off when he was. Yeah, that's up. the thing. Like he shouldn't have done that. It's like, okay, you're gonna chill with me and watch this thing. But well, whenever, at least if they were gonna do that, they're gonna show. Him, don't show, don't me. do it while the camera's on you. Exactly. Like. Don't show it while the while the cameras are on you. Or wait until the big show starts getting beaten down by Big Cass. Be like, whoa, you need to go sit down yeah. because I don't know what Big Cass is gonna do next. So that I mean, it's uh, whatever. And why is Big Cass still in, and why does he even care still? Because he got the win. He should well, be trying I, to move on. I think just because Enzo basically called him out. Yeah. He's like, yeah. He's probably call like, me out. I'm done. But. Call me out all you want. I beat you. Game over. I beat you. Um, after that, we got to see That's Elias. Not how wrestling works. No, it's not. Uh, we got to see Elias Sampson going up against Finn Balor. Um, Hi, I'm Elias Sampson. Who wants to walk with Elias? He never tells you where he's going, but... He'll offer you, offer the chance. Yeah, um, like Corey Graves is so wishy washy with him. The drift. Corey Graves hates him. Michael Cole is growing. Well, now on he's him. starting to hate him. When he first came back on Raw, he loved him. No, he didn't. Yeah, no. When he first started, he was praising him a little bit, and no, then he, he went to start hating him. Yeah, I uh, remember that. I think Graves was like continued his shitting on him from NXT yeah. the whole time. He's like, why is he I here? I remember. I remember. It was like his first it's, match. It's one of those like. There's like a handful of times where He's you have to like think about what great you're like Graves is like shitting on a heel. And then there's a couple of times where he like praise praises a baby face and you're like, oh, Graves is praising a baby face. But if it, those instances are always like consistencies that he's had, like if a guy flipped, like he, he keeps his stance like he didn't like that guy, like just because they're both heels. He doesn't put him over. He still shits on the guy. So every once in a while, he there's a weird dynamic. Like he puts over a baby face or shits on the heel. But if it's always something that he's. I don't know when it was, but there was a time on Raw. I don't know if it was his first match. He was praising him. I remember it. Like well, he might have said, "I'm be I'm impressed at his work." He always does so. the he always does the thing where he doesn't completely bury the guy. He's like, I can't take it away from his like his ring, but like as a as a dude, I don't like this guy. Yeah. Uh, but the match ends in a disqualification after Elias Sampson grabs his guitar, smashes it over Finn Balor, and uh, Finn got a nasty cut on the side of his head. I don't know if you guys saw the picture of it, uh, but it was uh, pretty pretty bad. Slap nuts. Yep, listen up, slap nuts. Uh, after that, we got to see Arya Davari going up against Akira Tozawa. The match ends in referee stoppage after uh, Titus O'Neil asked the ref to call for the bell. Um Aria was working the arm of Akira How do you the whole time. feel about that when Akira got mad at uh, Titus? I mean, it shows the tension, um, but it's also they had a uh, they had a segment 
on 205 Live. I didn't get to watch all of 205 Live, but I did see the segment where Apollo Crews goes up to to Zawa and he's like, look, man, I understand you're frustrated. I get it. But, you know, whenever I took that match against Braun Strowman, I got my butt handed to me. One thing that I did notice is that Titus O'Neil stood up for me. He was watching out for me. So, you know, although you didn't want to quit the match or you didn't want to lose, Titus does have your best interest in mind. And he's trying to make sure that you get to the finish line and not burn out. So it's a little something. So they're at least trying to say, hey, Titus, he, you know, he might be making a few mistakes giving us these matches, but uh, yeah, three or four guys in the he's, Titus brand. Yeah, he's got he's got your you know best interests in mind. Worldwide, worldwide, Titus, worldwide. Titus signed the WNS podcast. Worldwide, worldwide. Um, after that. We've got the big announcement, the months-long waiting, what's going to ruin Kurt Angle's career. He's going to be ruined well, if let this me ask gets you a out. Question. Before they announced it, you knew online? No. You saw online? No. So how would you guess? I did it as a joke. Oh, really? Yeah. Because I was like, oh, everyone's going to think it's Gable, but it's actually Jason Jordan. You sound like you knew, so. No. Were you shocked when he came out? I busted out laughing. I was like, oh, shit. Kelsey was wondering why I was laughing so hard. Just because, wow, they went they went with that angle. Which, I mean, it's fine. I don't have any issues with it. Uh, when I think about it, um, Jason Jordan needs Kurt Angle more than Chad Gable does. Uh, I think Gable is a little stronger on the mic. His in-ring work is, you know, fairly polished. Uh, I think Jason Jordan could use the the help of a experienced veteran like Kurt Angle. But uh, what were your guys' thoughts on the big reveal? I think it's interesting that you frame it that way because I think it, the my opinion is ab- like actually the opposite. I, I don't think it's, I don't think it was Gable will be fine. We need to do something for Jordan. I think they see the potential in Jordan and that's why they gave him the big spot. I, I think it, I think he's got the size they like and, Size matters less than it has, mm. and but he's got that look that they like, and I think this was not Gable will be fine. Let's do something to help Jordan. I think this is we see the potential in Jordan, and we're going to give him a big a big thing to well, do. I don't think it was backstage the <laughs> backstage politics saying Gable's going to be fine. It's it, that was my opinion uh, because I saw the match that he had with uh, with AJ Styles, and you know he'll be able to carry his own. Um, whereas maybe they do see something in Jordan. They're like, okay, let's, let's work on this guy. I think they do see something in Jordan. I think they see, I think he has a lot of ability in the ring and I think he has like a good size to him. He has a good look Mm -hmm. and I don't think he's a bad talker. I mean, maybe Gable is a little bit, he's got a little more charisma, but I mean, but if you look at the, the angle and the Jordan stuff, man, for some shit that ain't true, those guys make you feel like they actually like reconnected. <laughs> I mean, like, did, did either of y'all watch the uh, post raw interview? I saw a clip of no, it. I did not. I saw like a like a like two minute clip of it, but I didn't see the whole thing. I don't yeah. know how long it went, but from everything I saw, God bless those dudes because they made it. <laughs> they made it fucking work. I mean, and, An angle and my, tearing up and all my, that. And my, I, I think Jordan was just as good as as angle I, for. People, people were sort of like man about this, and I felt bad because I think like those dudes did everything they could to make this like yeah, get over. Yeah. Angle and Jordan both they they both felt it felt like a genuine thing to me. Like, a, do you I think mean, we all know it's bullshit? We all know yeah. he's not his son, but sure, they made you feel like yeah. like that's what they were like reliving. Do you think had they not built it up for so long? that more people would have been okay with it. Like if it had been like a, a two week thing where it's like, Oh my gosh, I just received huge news. What am I going to do? Then the following week, okay, you know, I've had a week to process it next week. I'm going to make a huge announcement. Or do you think that? No, they're trying to make a guy. Why not make it a big deal? Like they're trying to make this guy a thing. So like, let's make it a thing, you know, like, well, sure. But I mean, they're, they were treading, they're playing on the Dixie shit. And I actually saw people like who were like, Oh, it should have been Dixie. Uh, fuck that. You guys, Why? You, know, you guys watch Dixie on TNA because she fucking sucks on TV. Like she may be like a nice lady who's an incompetent businesswoman, but she fucking sucks on TV. That's true. If you wanted Dixie over this, you were out of your fucking mind, or you never saw her on TNA. Yeah, she's no good on fucking TV. 
I want to know. That was the pain. That was the reason. She was so bad that she was good, but then she even went further bad to all the way back around to just fucking oh, play, man. To, to play it all bad again. That's why I've asked that question on uh, on the podcast Facebook page. Where I was like, would you be happier or madder if it had turned out to be Dixie Carter? And a lot of people surprisingly were said happier. Like they prefer <laughs> they Dixie just, Carter. I'm like, seriously? And they think it's some like shock thing of like a TNA person being like a, a high. Yeah, it's the shock value. Yeah, but once that wears out, and you're you stuck with Dixie Carter. Yeah, you're like, week. this shit blows. No, trust me. They you should have watched TNA. Else. You should have watched TNA when she was there. It, it, there, no, no, there was no good moments. I mean, look, good for I. I think it's the right move to make it a big deal. They're trying to make this guy. I think he did everything he could to make it work. I think mm. Angle did everything he they could did to make good. it work. I swear, I cannot cry on command. Yeah, I can't either. But those actors, man, it's like, what do you, what do you think? Like, though? I probably could if I, but I, I couldn't do it like right on the spot. See, I'd have so to, you have to think of something like, oh, yeah, someone ran over my dog. Really or I don't know. It's also real. I yeah, mean, yeah. yeah, you have to get like real depressed real fast, and you can't let anything distract you and just cause up the tears. Damn, that's tough. I, I can't walk don't and think, pretend cry. I honestly don't think either one of these guys could have done anything more to sell this angle. And I think I think the the build up is appropriate. I don't think it should have been anything less because this, if it's less, then he's not he's not the big deal you're trying to make. It's cool that they did something like that because everyone's like, oh, Kurt Angle needs to manage, you know, you know, uh, American Alpha. That could be the new team angle. But at least we we get something like that. But I mean, like if you look at them, you can they they look similarly enough. You could be like, I could buy that he has hmm. some angles features. You know, I like. They're both like their body types aren't very dissimilar, and like even in the face, like the way their head shaped, like I could see some fucking. I could I could buy that he's Angle's kid. I, yeah. I mean, yeah. See, I saw like I, I maybe. I mean, Gable's a little dude. <laughs> or a lot, we were taught to believe that Edge and Christian were brothers. Kane and the Undertaker were brothers. I swear well, though, sometimes why can't this how be father and son. I know in some of his promos, I swear Gable kind of sounds like Kurt. Yeah. And a lot of people were expecting it to be Gable. Yeah. Which, you know, either, no, I mean, either way that they went. Either it was or, fine. yeah, I'm still fine with it. So, yeah. So, and it looks like they are going to be pushing Jason Jordan. Uh, he's going to be sort of the main story for uh, for the foreseeable future. Yeah, it's going to be weird now because. Now what? <laughs> well, they've got to walk a line of like this whole like nepotism thing. Like Angle's the manager and then like. That's his, my boy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So they've got to. I mean, this isn't like a McMahon family angle, so they've got to walk that line of, you know. Mm-hmm. What if like he just starts plus. beating people for a while and say Miz like holds on to the title and then it'll eventually get to it'll be like Jason Jordan versus the Miz for the Intercontinental title. Work his way up. Yep. Yeah. Now I'm not going to give you a free ride. You know, you're going to have to earn it. But I love you. I love you, son. Yeah. I mean, good for him. He you want some milk. Let's let's see what he does. You know. Give him the ball, see what he's going to do. Yep. So uh, so we'll have to see. Uh, after that, we got to see the Revival defeat the Hardy Boys. So uh, The Harvey Boys. Yes, Jeff Harvey. Um, I don't know. Do you think uh, the split is coming soon for the Hardy Boys? Like they split together or like their personality splits and they become broken? <laughs> well, rumors have it that the Hardy Boys will split. Jeff will go on to do his normal thing, and Matt will become the broken character that everyone knows and loves. And then he's going to try to take over. It's going to be a repeat. He's going to try to bring in Brother Nero. He's going to fight him. And then he's going to be beat up and thrown into the lake of reincarnation. And there's going to be a dilapidated boat. Yeah. Senior Benjamin. Yeah. They all come to the WWE. Mm-hmm. Get your Senior Benjamin t shirt. There you go. Uh, main event was Samoa Joe versus Roman Reigns. This match ended in a no contest or a double disqualification after Braun Strowman attacked. But the uh, the match itself, I was having a good time watching it. Yeah, I can't remember, like, and this isn't official yet, but, I mean, it seems like they're going to go four-way. And I can't remember the last time I've actually genuinely been excited for a four-way where everyone felt like, yeah, this is actually what I want instead of... It's like four of the biggest guys you have. Well, not not just that, but just it feels like four guys who are actually like intertwined in like a main event scene that is undecided instead of usually it feels like uh, 
we don't want to make any hard cut booking decisions, so we're going to throw this like multi main out there, and that's mm-hmm. still kind of what they're doing. But at least it feels like actually what I want. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I'm I'm genuinely looking looking forward to it, and we actually uh, we ran a Twitter poll uh, on our Twitter page uh, at WNS Podcast. So if you're not already following us and you have Twitter. Go- Feel free to. Uh, we asked if we do end up getting a fatal four way at SummerSlam, who would you want to win? And we had uh, 579 votes, with 42% going to Braun Strowman, uh, 36% says Samoa Joe, 12% Brock Lesnar, 10% Roman Reigns. Well, that's Damn. sad because Roman's Penn and Joe. I hope you all know that. <laughs> <coughs> Just to let you guys know. Um, well, yeah, that's that's who they want to win, down. not who they think is going to win. That's on our own Twitter feed. Yes. Wow. That and I, you know, shared it through the WN source. Great yeah, find. That, so. Yeah, Romans Peninja. Yeah. So. Uh, Sad but true. But it was it was a really enjoyable match, um, and it ended with Braun Strowman decimating everyone who got in his way. Um, so that takes us over to SmackDown Live. We kick things off with Jinder Mahal introducing the Punjabi prison. How do you, how do you um, say it? Punjabi prison. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, Randy Orton comes out and says, you've just made the biggest mistake because you've taken away your, you know, the only thing that can uh, get you the victory are the Singh brothers. And so now you're going to be trapped in the prison with me. There's no escape. Blah, blah, blah. I'm going to beat your ass. Beat your ass. That's right. Throw your hands up. Jurassic Park, the video game on Super Nintendo, introducing third and first person playing. <laughs> that was fun. Good one. Yeah. Uh, after that, we got to see Jimmy Uso going up against Kofi Kingston. Are hey, you Kofi Kingston? <laughs> nah, man. You're faking. Dude, you're faking. Yeah, that's it. Um, Jimmy ends up getting the victory. So, congrats to them. We got to hear from Chad Gable, who's basically saying, you know, I'll, I support my partner. My He tag never partner. knew. I didn't know, but I did receive a call and got the information, and uh, I'll be all right on my own. We'll see what's next yep. for the future. And then next Raw, he jumps in. Yes. There we go. Start the feud early. Yeah. Um, we got to see the debut for Mike Kanellis going up against <laughs> Sami <laughs> Zayn. You are the best. Was it? I can't sing, can't sing the song. Theme song. You are the greatest. That's greatest. Good, that's it. Something like that. Um, so we finally got the uh, Mike Kanellis debut. I'll tell going you what, man. Uh, I don't really remember too much of his wrestling Ring of Honor. There wasn't too much to it in this match. Pretty simple. Simple match. Doug, did you get to get this match? I missed Spider Man. Oh, okay. Uh, so Mike Kanellis ends up getting the victory after a distraction. From Maria. Maria, then he punches him in the face. Right hand. Pins oh, the then, power of And then Sami Zayn crumples like he usually does. <laughs> Pretty good. Uh, John Cena came out, cut a promo about the flag match that he has against Rusev. He tried his best. I mean, you can only get people hyped up so much about a flag match. And uh, I don't know if they've done this before. I'm pretty sure in past flag matches, all they had to do was grab the pole like grab the flag off of the off the pole and you win. Was that the stipulation in pa- in years past? Yeah. Pretty this sure. time you not only have to grab the flag but you have to bring it to the top of the stage, which they're calling the finish line and plant the flag in the flag stand. Hmm. Okay. So similar to um a stretcher match uh where you have to push it up to a certain point. So should be interesting to see, at least. Uh, Rusev came out and attacked John Cena, put him in the accolade, and made him pass out. He grabbed the flag, planted the flag, and expressed it in his dunk. ass. No. So it's sort of like capture the flag, mm-hmm. then, I guess? Yes. Capture the flag. <clears throat> Very good. He like, um, wedged it in there. <clears throat> he inserted it. Uh, we got to see Becky Lynch go up against Charlotte. Natalia was on commentary, and they all went nuts and attacked <sighs> everybody. The the commentary from Natalia was awful. I like, missed it. Did she talk about her cats? No, they would ask her a question and she would answer pertaining to something else. And they were like, Well, we're not talking about that. We're talking about you in this in this instance. Oh, well, let's not talk about me. Let's talk about this match. 
And it happened so frequently. It's like she wasn't really paying attention to what they were she saying. She was not there. She and JBL was just were just going back and forth. I, it was so distracting. I didn't even care about the match. Um, Becky Lynch ends up getting the victory via submission. Then Nia Jax and Lana come out and attack with Natalia and whatever. Nia Jax. Oh, I'm sorry. Dang it. <laughs> Tamina. <laughs> Nia Jax was there. Yeah. yeah. Tamina and Lana. Sorry. So was Sable. And... Uh... Yeah. Terry. Yeah. And the cat. The cat, yeah. <laughs> Teaming up with Natalia. Uh, then we got to see the fashion X-Files. Did you get to see this, Tyler? Nope. No. It was all right. Nope. Had a couple funny I'll moments. Say, uh, is any of their stuff really good? Yeah. You might get a chuckle, chuckle or two. Uh, main event, Baron Corbin teaming up with Kevin Owens going up against Shinsuke Nakamura and AJ Styles before the matchup even gets going. Corbin and Owens attack Shinsuke from behind while he's making his entrance. They end up a big brawl, which then leads to the tag match. And uh, Corbin and Owens end up getting the in the victory, uh, but nothing really to take away from the match. Nothing really pertaining to the pay-per-view, other than they are each other's opponents for Battleground, which, speaking of Battleground, we got to hear those picks. We got to hear those picks. We've got to hear those picks. With Battleground taking place this Sunday on the WWE Network, we've got a kickoff match that we'll talk about. Ty Dillinger against Aiden English. So, Tyler, we'll kick things off with you. Who are you going to pick to win? Ty Dillinger? Yeah. It seemed like they're higher on him than Aiden English. And, so and he's the loose. perfect 10? Yeah. All right, so Ty, Doug? Uh, I will take Ty Dillinger as well. All right, I will do the same. Uh, pick Ty to make it a tie. Um, I don't know if it's a kickoff. They just announced it today, or if it's on the main card. But it is gonna be Sami Zayn and Mike Kanellis in a rematch. I figured that would probably end up happening. I'd imagine that'd be on the card with it being his pay per view debut or whatever. He's the greatest, greatest. So I guess you want to go into that one. Sure, why not? Sami uh, Zayn versus Mike Kanellis. Mike Kanellis. Mike Kanellis, Doug? Mike Kanellis. I will go with Mike Kanellis as well. So it's hard to go up against the power of love. Yep. Scott earned the power of love. I feel like, I don't know, Sammy loses like all the time, but he's yep. still, it doesn't, like, it, I he's thought a lovable it did, loser. I thought it did affect him, but to me, it doesn't, like, affect him that much. I feel like <clears throat> it doesn't affect him because they're not pushing him as. Someone who's going to go anywhere. If he was someone they were trying to push as a champion, then no one would buy it because he loses all the time. Man, they need to move him over to Raw where he'll be used correctly. <laughs> They'll use him right over there. Uh, uh, shit. <laughs> so let's go to the next match. Baron Corbin versus Shinsuke Nakamura. Um, Doug, we'll go with you on this one first. Uh, I'm going to say Shinsuke. Shinsuke? How about you, Tyler? Shinsuke, because they always do the thing. Whoever has the money in the bank briefcase always loses, like, matches, like, before they cash in. So. Yeah. Well, um, I like Shinsuke, so yeah. Yeah, I'll go I with I like Baron Corbin, too. I keep on cutting you off, but I'm going to go with Shinsuke. Okay. That's it. Okay. <clears throat> uh, I'm going to go with Shinsuke Nakamura to uh, win as well. So that'll take us into the fatal five-way elimination match. Charlotte, Natalia, Becky, Tamina, and Lana. Uh, Like I said, it's a fatal five-way elimination match. So who is going to be the last woman standing? Tyler. Man, I don't freaking know. (laughs) Take a guess. Shot in the dark. Who's going to face Naomi at SummerSlam? Charlotte. Charlotte? All right. How about you, Doug? Like the winners facing Naomi at SummerSlam? Yes. Lana. Naomi currently does not have an opponent for um, Battleground. She does now. It's Maria Kanellis. Uh, I'll go Natalia. Natalia, interesting. And her cat. Uh, hmm. I don't know why. Just because I feel like they killed Lana off. I yeah. mean, I missed SmackDown this week. That Did they was show pretty anything? quick. Did they Pretty do anything quick. with Lana this week that would make you think they were not done with her? Nope. Okay. I mean, she was there, but that's... So then you're... So then it's got to be Charlotte, Natalia, or Becky. Feels like they... Why not Tamina? Why are you selling her short? Because they haven't done anything to showcase her yeah, in any, any real manner. But she's showing Lana the ropes. There's the ropes. 
Hey, look, here they are. Right over here. I mean, I guess they could go Charlotte or Becky, but if... I don't know. They just turned Charlotte face. Not when she came over, so I don't know why you'd want to go there yet. I'm going to say Natalia. I'm sticking with Natalia. Natalia? Okay. Go with a different person. We could all be three different. Sure, why not? I'll say Tamina. <laughs> I'm in a real guess. I'll say Tamina. So... All different on that one. Hey, that would be actually pretty cool if she won, though, because we've yeah, I would love to have her. that point. <laughs> no, I mean, no, I'm serious because <laughs> they don't they don't do anything with her. That'd be just to give it's her a shot because her knees are shot; she can barely move her own. Yeah, uh, that match is gonna suck if you get that as a singles match. So I hope yeah. you. So have turn. Lana in the corner, and then there's always the threat of Carmella cashing in. So her <laughs> knees are shot. She have you seen? She she basically looks immobile. She basically looks like she's in pain, just trying to move her own. That sucks. Yeah. yeah. Uh, let's talk about the tag team championship match. New Day going up against the Usos. Uh, Doug, we'll go to you first. I, I don't know. You convinced me. I don't know. I didn't Shit. see. Did they? I didn't see uh, SmackDown, so I don't know. Uh, Jimmy Uso defeated Kofi Kingston. That was about it. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna stick with New Day. New Day. Yeah. To become new tag team champions. Oh no no! I mean, I meant stick with the Usos. Keep, Usos? I mean, All right. When I said stick with, I mean like keep it like on the Usos. <laughs> All right. I'm, I'm not, Usos. I'm not sticking with shit. I mean the Usos. Usos. Damn. Day one is H. Um, Usos. I'm gonna go with Usos as well. Uh, Day one is H. <laughs> uh, after that, let's talk about the United States Championship match: AJ Styles versus Kevin Owens. Did we find um, out why they took the belt off of him? Nope. Like at a the house show? Nope. Just to create every, a little every once in a while. Create they a little it. buzz. They do it to let you know that. Oh, you can't miss this show. house show. You never know what's oh, going to happen. Oh, we changed the title in Beaumont, Texas. It's happened. Well, they, they did that one at MSG, so it's a little bit different. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like his face is like, uh. no, I want to say that a title has changed hand in Beaumont. I, uh, no, I mean, I mean, this title changed hands in Madison Square Garden. Well, yeah, yeah, but I'm. I'm thinking <laughs> for whatever reason I'm I'm thinking it was uh Cesaro and Tyson Kidd and the Usos that they had a, a championship the tag I titles say false it, it might be but I do know that that the titles have changed hands at a house show featuring I had those a dream four. that there was a house show in Beaumont and all the titles were changed ooh that'd be an interesting night uh what's going on <laughs> what's going on I mean, uh, you get to see Brock Lesnar. Bork. Bork laser. Yeah. Usos. All right. So let's talk about the flag match. John Cena versus Rusev. Did we do AJ and Owens? No, we did. Oh, pick? yeah. We got, <laughs> we got a little sidetracked and said Usos. So. Uh, I'm going to go with AJ Styles. <laughs> Me too. Me three. All right. <laughs> now let's talk about the, the Usos are going to become match. the U.S. champion. John Cena versus Rusev. And a flag match, first first person to retrieve the flag, run it to the finish line, and plant the flag, not in someone's butt, <laughs> Damn becomes me. the winner. What if they both run up there? Okay, I'm, I'm, just picking like, John, I'm picking John Cena, by the way. Okay. And, like, they're both running, they're beating each other up, but, like, Rusev falls, ding, 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 and then he, like, ding, falls on his stomach, ding, ding, and then, like, John Cena can just plant ding, ding, it in his butt. And then, What is with you in, like, inserting a flag into someone's butt? I don't know. It's a butt. Why thing, do you think? Why do you think people who like things in their butt is so funny? I don't know. I'm just I'm giddy right now. I don't know why I'm laughing at this. Yeah, for, for shame on you, Tyler. <laughs> shame on you. Dang it! Someone such a me. child. I'm such a child. But John Cena. John Cena. All right. How about you, Doug? <laughs> Tyler. <laughs> You're picking Tyler. Um, no, no, no. I would. He gets um, something shoved up his butt. What's up? Oh, uh, uh, butts! Let's see. Oh, shit. Mm, I don't know, because this, ma this match is built for no one to take the L for real. You know I what mean, I mean? Is John Cena yeah. going to stick around? I mean, I mean, Rusev's sticking around. I mean, it's, yeah, it's like Cena just came back, and then this is Rusev's like re-debut, and so... Rusev came back as well. Yeah. They came back on the same day. I'm gonna but go Rusev with, didn't get a package. I'm going to go with Video Cena just because I think that... Uh, America good, foreigner bad. Yeah, I, I think they're going to do the patriotic shit USA. For, the, uh, for the flag USA. match. 
Plus, Rusev's not really taking a loss if he, he's not like he's getting pinned or anything. So. Yeah. So you're going with Cena? Yeah, same thing could be said. You could use that exact same argument against Cena. You didn't pin me. Yeah, and it's a it's a way for Cena to lose without it being a clean pin, and uh, it's also the same can be said for Rusev. Uh, I'm gonna go with John Cena because, like I said, foreign or bad, America good. We're the greatest country in the Everybody. world. The people were like All that foreigner. Stuff. Yeah. Uh, main event: hero. Jinder Mahal versus Randy Orton for the WWE Championship inside the Punjabi prison. So. What if? Okay, so I don't remember ever watching the the Great Kali. Was it Great Kali and Undertaker that was in the Punjabi? I think that was Big Show and Undertaker. Oh, sorry. It was supposed to be Great Kali, but he couldn't perform in that match. So they have two. So that was exactly yes. what it looks like. Yes. What if they give over one and they're trapped between both of those? Those. Then they're trapped between them. They can't get out. They they sh- they went over the instructions at the beginning of the match. There are four doors. There's one on each side of the inner cage. Mm-hmm. Um, when an opponent says to the referee, lift up the door, the doors will lift, and they will have 60 seconds to try and get out. If Once the 60 seconds has expired, the doors will close back up, and they will remain closed for the remainder of the match. So if you beat down your opponent and then you escape the cage and they do not, then they're stuck inside and they would have to climb all the way over the first cage, then climb all the way over the second cage, whereas the first person can just go through the door and then climb out. The Singh brothers are going to be in which level? (laughs) Uh, They're probably not. So they'll probably be on the outer edge. They didn't put this in the the game, man. They never put this in. Do you think the the Singh brothers ain't climbing in there? They are. I think they have to. Mm, They might. They probably will. They'll probably try and get involved. You somehow. think Randy Orton's gonna do some move to him, and they're gonna be like over, like thrown or something? Like you know how he does with those guys? They like <laughs> he tries just, to kill him. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure they've got something planned. So stay tuned for that. <laughs> but I'm gonna go with Jinder Mahal to retain. Me too. I'm gonna go with Jinder too. Jinder. Right. It's unanimous on that one. Picking Jinder. Jinder Mahal. <clears throat> So, uh, with that being said, those were some great if, picks. If, if Kali comes out of the ground cane style. Oh, <laughs> my <laughs> gosh. That would get me pumped, man. It really would. Oh, Lord have mercy. I love Great Kali. Yeah. Those, those are some great picks. picks. Those, those are, are some, some great, great picks, picks with Great Kali. So, so there you go. Dicks. Uh, going into hot topics, Mia Young. <laughs> <laughs> Tyler can't spell. <laughs> Mia Young classic introduction. Tyler, take it away. <laughs> Tell us all about the Mia Young classic. I only got to watch a part of it, but uh, you didn't watch it? They, they I did not. The girls I did not stuff. get to watch the parade. Um, I missed it. Yeah. How uh, did he spell it? M E A. Mia Young. <laughs> Mia Young. Who is that? Um, she's a <laughs> tennis player. Uh, Switch the other two letters around. My bad. M A E. May. Like uh, Bay? Yeah. I was telling Doug Fair. earlier. Now I didn't realize that. Um, <clears throat> you remember Serena from uh, Straight Edge Society? Mm-hmm. She's back. All right. And I didn't realize that was her with her uh, hair. Um, <laughs> Does she have well, hair? Well, she's probably gonna do the Kendrick role, like the vet returning. Well, I that, was brainwashed and ruined that my opportunity. Too, and then they're going by Serena Deeb. They didn't go by Serena Deeb when she was in there, right? She was just Serena. She was just Serena. Yeah, but so I guess all that threw me off. Then Lita was saying something like, oh, she's back in WWE. And I was like, was that the Serena? So I looked it up, and it was her. Um, I, there's a lot of girls I don't know their names and stuff, and a lot I've never seen before. So uh, Kimberly's in it. What yep. is she called? Who I can't think of. I don't. I can't remember what they call her now. But she's in it. Um, and then one of uh, Ronda Rousey's friends is in it. Shayna Baszler. Yeah, I heard in the tapings they had a little confrontation. Well, they with, like uh, the w- the wrestling four horsewomen were sitting together, and like Rousey was there, and they they were both like doing like the four things too. Oh, uh, they're gonna do something with that. You think? Well, I mean, Baszler. <laughs> four. Okay, I'm not gonna. I shouldn't say spoilers. Yeah, probably. People will probably get mad. Uh, we'll say it. Spoiler off. alert! Nah. If you don't if you don't want to hear a spoiler for the Mayan Classic, skip ahead 30 seconds. 
Ba- <laughs> I was going to say, are you going to wait 30 <laughs> seconds? <to laughs> ba- Baszler's in the finals, so they're definitely... Hey! Hey! Right. So. Cool. That was, I was uh, asking him, I wonder, I guess they're just going to get a trophy. <laughs> I was going to wait 30 <laughs> Yeah, I think they're gonna. They're probably gonna. Trophy exactly be built. Oh, you're gonna be the women's champion. What? <laughs> yeah. So we'll see. I'm. I'm looking forward to it. Do you hear the reports about the like some of the backstage officials being up- upset that the ladies aren't sexier or whatever? What? Hmm? Where did you hear this? What? It's, it was reported on the Who internet. I think they are turning it down on purpose. Like the, it was the. Uh... I don't know what you mean. They had a. Um, they show a picture of a uh, woman referee. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Let's see. Talk amongst yourselves while I find this. Okay. Little bit of she was the the woman who is now the the one they're claiming is the first like full time women's referee is not actually there was one before, but like she accused Vince of some sort of like. Sexual harassment or when sexual misconduct years ago. Oh, and that's so that she's like stricken from the records. So they have like, oh. so they have like a new woman who's like they're claiming yeah. is the this is number <clears throat> one. Yeah. Okay, here it is. It the, is cool uh, that they have a woman's ref though. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I agree. The Wrestling Observer is reporting that there are some WWE officials who were said to be unhappy during the first two nights of the inaugural May Young Classic Tournament. More specifically, because of how some of the women appeared to look. According to the report, there's still to there still appear to be some individuals in WWE, quote, who believe that WWE women all have to be hot, end quote. And apparently it was felt by these officials that many of the 32 competitors in the tournament weren't, quote, good looking enough for WWE standards, end quote. Shallow, man. That is pretty, uh, <clears throat> pretty ridiculous. They've got a, I mean, they what they need is like talented women and they've got they've got a bunch of talented women in the tournament yeah. so they'll, they'll be and all right did y'all see the the comment from ryback about the female wrestlers i heard that he made something he said something but i don't know no, what uh he basically came out and uh on his podcast uh said that women wrestlers today are lacking playing up to their sexiness and that they sh- they could shake their ass more and more in order to become more over and more popular with the fans so there's that. Wow. So yeah. Speaking of Ryback, do you watch that video? That you, you know the the big guy who's just setting the independent scene on fire since he's been released. Yeah, that's what he's talking about. What's he been doing over there? He's got a podcast. <laughs> no, no, I know he has a podcast. He's doing what? like he's doing like select shows and stuff. But I mean, he's working. Pat Buck, who's the other guy on this podcast, he works for Pat Buck all the time, but. I mean, he's not doing anything of note, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. <clears throat> but yeah, speaking of uh, Ryback, I want to send a special thank you to uh, Matthew of Botchamania for featuring part of our interview with uh, uh, Simon Gotch slash Simon Grimm in the back and forth heated debate of Ryback and Simon Gotch. So pretty neat. Um, don't know if you guys saw the news. Well, I know Doug did. I don't know if Tyler saw it. But, yeah, uh, I saw it a few hours ago. Yeah, the, the helicopter incident with Shane McMahon. Apparently, a helicopter was carrying uh, Shane and uh, one other person. And they had to make a controlled emergency landing in the Atlantic Ocean off of Long Island. Um, okay, it's fucking crazy either way, but when I first read it, I thought that it, like, he literally survived like a crash landing. Yeah. And this was like a more of like a we we need to set down on the water. Yeah, we gotta we have to like emergency land. I mistook emergency landing for crash landing. I was like, holy shit, like he fucking survived a crash. Like, but it was like an emergency, like something fucked up with the helicopter and they had to land it, right? Is that what really happened? Yeah, there was uh <laughs> according to the you know, comments made by Shane, he heard a, a bang or a boom, some sort of loud noise. Uh, the pilot said, hey, something just went wrong. We've got to we've got to land this now. Uh, and fortunately, the helicopter that they were in had uh, sort of inflatable pontoons or something uh, so that it could land on the water. So mm-hmm. they, you know, glided down to the water and were fortunate enough that they had a, a safe landing. Shit, and that's still scary, you know, the, you know the video where they interview Shane and the pilot? 
like the the poor pilot whoever the camera person is is such a dick because they zoom in on the pilot's feet i saw that he's got, like, <laughs> he's got, he's got sandals got, on and black he socks has, like, socks i guess because his shoes got all wet probably yeah but he has like sandals on with like socks and, and whoever the camera person is zooms in on his feet like, like look what the fuck this guy's wearing this dude just this dude just emergency this dude just saved the there. lives of two people and himself and, and we're worried about what, what he's this motherfuckers wear. <laughs> <laughs> that poor guy. Oh, gotta, oh, God. The dude is this. a fucking hero. <laughs> after after this, fun of his <laughs> after this, you guys show me this shit. Play. It's like a thirty second fucking video. Yeah. Is that, Although I don't, I don't know if that. I think this I, one is strictly the Shane McMahon. Oh, okay. Where he's asked, "Are you Vince McMahon's son?" And he goes, "Yeah, I am." <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. I think we already asked that before, but yeah, but yeah. I mean, <laughs> breaking news: this guy. This guy's yeah, wearing football. socks and sandals, that bitch. Probably because his shoes were like soaked from emergency <laughs> landing a helicopter, but whatever, you know. He I might got have, distracted. Yeah. He may have lost them. We don't yeah, know. I watched it like three times. I was like, <laughs> they keep zooming on this poor bastard's <laughs> feet. Oh my God. That poor I guy. I thought it was so funny. I was like, what an asshole. Well, it's because of all things to focus on. I know. And it's not like they don't just pan down, they like zoom in. <laughs> Like they want you to for sure know what this dude's wearing. <laughs> that poor guy. So Shane's talking. He was gonna be known as a hero. Damn it. Shane's talking and he's they just zoomed in on that dude's feet. I I don't remember who's talking. I think I gotta watch. This. I think the first thing they do is they go to the pilot first. And while he's this goes talking, down. they just like pan down and zoom in. <laughs> well, I think they were. I think it was whenever Shane was like spelling out his name for the press. Yeah, yeah. And so they like zoom in. I'm like, God, come oh, on, man. man. What an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> that, that cameraman is known to be a dick. Yeah. Speaking of assholes and dicks, uh, whoever's decision this was, Talking Smack has been canceled. Um, and. Uh, Renee Young actually found out via Twitter posts. So that they didn't even let her know. She found out through other sources. And, Same uh, thing with Brian, apparently. Yeah. And uh, apparently Vince, uh, this is alleged or rumored or whatever, uh, apparently Vince did not like how unscripted or out, out of control the show Brian. was. Yeah. That could probably be a contributing factor to the matter. But it was the fact that that it motherfucker was thinks he can say anything. A lot more unscripted than than most. Uh, Which is kind of sad because that's sort of what reinvigorated Business career. Yeah, like sort of letting him say like whatever yeah. he felt like he didn't say. Yeah, yep. And that's also speculated <clears throat> as one of the reasons why we haven't had like a Stone Cold podcast in a while because he tends to go off, you know, and be a little more unscripted. In his, uh, Can you imagine his if they had uh, Stone Cold with Daniel Bryan, just like talking to him, and that'd be really good. Because one doesn't have to give a fuck, and one doesn't give a fuck. Yeah, <clears throat> that'd yeah. be awesome. Uh, I, we probably should have talked about this during Raw during the main event. But did you guys hear the stuff about Brock? Like, like there were like MMA journalists who said they've been told like by multiple sources that he's re-entered the USADA testing pool, which means he's probably going to fight again in November. Really? Yeah, in UFC. Yeah. Which I is thought why he's, he's going to drop the title at SummerSlam. Uh, oh, rumor killer regarding MMA return for Brock Lesnar. Oh, let's hear uh, it. Here it is. According to MMAJunkie.com, as previously reported, it had been rumored by multiple sur- sources that current WWE Universal champion Brock Lesnar would reportedly be making a return to the UFC at the company's November 4th event in Madison Square Garden. Uh, Both he and Paul Heyman had reportedly gone to UFC headquarters in order to meet with company officials during the International Fight Week, which took place earlier this month. The report that stated this, which came from the Talk MMA Twitter account, also stated that Lesnar would likely drop the Universal Championship to Roman Reigns at August's uh, WWE SummerSlam event, and that Lesnar was currently in the process of re-entering the U.S. anti-doping agency testing pool in order to once again be able to compete in the Octagon. However, according to a statement from Jeff, Jeff Nowitzki, UFC's Vice President of Athlete Health and Performance, to MMAJunkie.com, there is no truth to any of the reports regarding Lesnar making any kind of return to the UFC anytime soon. Quote, he is not currently enrolled in the U.S. ADA testing pool, nor has there been any inquiry on his part to do so. You know, they're losing like their top draw, though, pretty much. Mm-hmm. So it would not surprise me if they were looking for someone to fill that void. 
some draws to fill the void. Yeah. Uh, and also there's a uh, report about Alberto El Patron's upcoming uh, Global Force Wrestling live appearances, uh, possibly still in doubt. Uh, during a media call that took place this past Wednesday, Jeremy Borash was asked uh, about the status of Alberto El Patron, whether or not he will be appearing at upcoming live events that are scheduled to take place because uh, he's still being advertised despite being currently suspended from the company in, re- in response Borash stated that current situation involving El Patron is still under investigation and that in regards to the show's rosters for the events, no final decisions have been made as of yet. He further stated that sometime next week, the final lineups for the events should be made available. Uh, and it, you know, I wonder if they're just going to like get rid of him or do away with him. And then WWE is going to do the same with Paige. I don't know. I don't know what the deal is. Uh, as previously reported, El Patron remains under investigation by police in Orlando, Florida, as pertains to a domestic violence incident involving his fiance, current current WWE superstar Paige. Furthermore, it was announced today by local authorities that Paige may also be charged with battery by the Florida State Attorney's Office if they decide to do so. Well, if she's charged, they have like a zero tolerance policy, so she would be like it for sure. Yeah. <clears throat> so that's. One more story to go Spiral. into that. I don't know if GFW has that sort of stuff lined. I mean, they're doing the responsible thing and keeping them off yeah. until they know what's up, but I don't know that they have a... I mean, it would indicate that they would do that. They would let him go because why else would they be doing the keep him off the show thing if he was charged or whatever, mm-hmm. so... um, <clears throat> Did you see those pictures of Austin Aries with a shaved head, yes. shaved beard? That looks he so looks weird. weird. Looks yeah. Weird. I don't like it. I don't know what like, what he's exactly going to do. I know he's promoting his book, but um, wishing the best of luck. Yeah. Uh, and for those of you who are still hanging out, hanging on to the hope that CM Punk will return to wrestling, apparently he he sat down with ESPN Radio uh, and was asked if he if there was any part of him that missed professional wrestling. And according to the wrestler Wrestling Observer newsletter, Punk's response was no, not at all. So, yeah, just a little bit of update. Um, uh, one more thing, uh, former WWE superstar, current uh, Lucha Underground star, John Morrison, Johnny Mundo, um, has referred to Vampiro as an office stooge on his uh, official Twitter profile. Huh. So he he basically said... Quote, the locker room thinks you, Vampiro, are a two-faced lying douchebag who believes his own lies. Hashtag office stooge. Hmm. Uh, And you might be wondering the reasoning for that. Um, Apparently, uh, it was explained in a situation on Reddit where it says, quote, I just heard all the details so I can hook you up. Johnny is engaged to Taya. She's the women's champ in AAA. Vamp has the book. So they get Johnny in for a photo shoot and ask him to bring all his belts. He has three belts for the company. They also ask him to bring Taya's belt because uh, because even though she wasn't in the shoot, they wanted to get some shots of the belt. Okay, so the shoot is done. They say they'll need some more shots with Taya's belt, and they'll most likely just keep it for the next until the next show and give it to her when she shows up. Okay, sure, not a big deal. Happens all the time, probably, I would imagine. I mean, this is why WWE has multiple belts, so they always have one in case of something. So the next show happens. Ty is not booked. They announce they are stripping her of the title for a reason that makes no sense. She used a choke in a no DQ match, and technically the other wrestler never submitted. They were just choked out. Yeah, really dumb. Now they have to give the title. Now they just give the title to Sexy Star, who just came back from literally leaving the company high and dry and refusing to drop the title. Like this shit is beyond the level of uh, TNA levels of asshole. So yeah, they both have every right to be severely pissed for be for basically tricking Johnny into giving them the title to fuck his fiance over for no good reason. I believe there was a reason given, which was her missing a show or something, which was a show she wasn't booked for. Basically, Vamp is a piece of shit, end quote. Huh. So that's all I can report. Don't know any uh further details. Uh, Just reading the news. So shady shit. Yeah, very shady. So, anywho, I don't know. Has there been any uh, any new announcements for uh, 2K18? Nope. Nothing? Nothing. Dang. Nothing at all. That sucks. Um, yeah, what's just... 
I don't know. I'm still going to get the game. I'm going to be pumped for it. But, you know, with games right now, I have two games that I'm playing. But when I get a chance. Yeah. You know, I don't play games like a lot like I used to. Um, Which ones are you into? Elder Scrolls Online. Nice. And the Kingdom Hearts 1.5 and 2.5 Remix. Very cool. Uh, I guess final bit of uh, hot topic news. Kenny Omega and the Young Bucks have re-signed with New Japan Pro Wrestling. So it looks like they will have deals run until 2018. Shit. At least for now. Um, I know there were a lot of people hoping that Omega would have hopped over to WWE. No. Um, Nah. So that's pretty much going to do it for us uh, this week. I'm trying to see, was there anything else for us to really cover? Nope, not this time. If you have any uh, predictions for Battleground, make sure you leave it in the comments section on our YouTube channel. Um, because we Shit, are still going. Yeah. <laughs> you were hoping we had, the show was over? No, no. I just I had to pee. I couldn't hold it. I was oh, like, yeah. they aren't wrapping this up. I <laughs> wrap it up. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, so, yeah, let us know in the comment sections. Uh, check us out on WrestlingNewsSource.com, WrestlingNewsSource.com on Facebook. Subscribe to our show on YouTube, WNS Video, on iTunes, Wrestling News Source Podcast. Check us out on Facebook, WNS Podcast. We're on Stitcher, BeyondPod, Player.fm, and Satchel. And all you have to do to find us is search Wrestling News Source Podcast to find us. I just said, yeah, whatever. It works. Yeah, whatever. Uh, yeah, the podcast, you, uh, you can follow it on Twitter at WNS Podcast. Daniel's at WNS underscore Daniel and Tyler's at Tyler underscore Bear. There you go. So for the podcast crew, I am Dino Heron. I'm Tyler Bear. <sighs> I'm a squid kid. And we will catch you all next week. Enjoy Battleground. <laughs>